kind of inside out, get something inside out, and just brushed my finger right through my Herbie's needle flame. And oh my gosh, you know. What's up everybody? It's Rick James with The Daily Sesh. We got another episode today. We actually have Larry Limes Glass. What's up everybody? He's a perfect example of um, a home-blown glass blower. Uh, a lot of his work lately has been out of his studio from the house, but he also works at a studio in Tempe as well. Yeah, with a few other guys, you might know him. T. Schmitty, Stizzle, Goober Gabe, they're all really cool local glass blowers. I'll share time there, but I always find myself coming back to home. It's, it's where I like started. I love working here. I'm comfortable. I know where all my stuff is, you know, and it's just, I love it. You know, I love working with other people. It pushes you. It makes you want to, you know, step up your game, work harder, work more. Uh, I definitely might work a little less at home sometimes due to some distractions, but I just like being in the comfort and having my own stuff. Nice. So let's kind of get into it. Um, you're a little younger than some of the other people that I've filmed. How old are you? So I just turned 21 about four or five months ago. Um, I was started doing this when I was about, just about to turn 19. And um, so it's been about a little over two and a half years now. And just started doing it. I stopped going to school, started blowing glass, and I love it. What got you into glass blowing? Um, it's uh, back in high school I had some friends who had some cool glass and Toros and whatnot and uh, I actually remember one of them convinced me to buy one of them off of him and you know I loved it I got so interested in glass I started trading glass and just it was so cool on Instagram when I knew nothing like every day I'd find 10 more artists that I thought were like so awesome and could just make such cool things and I don't know it just kind of made me want to put my hand in there and try. So you're just like an everyday smoker and then just started getting into glass blowing. Where did was like one of the first places you actually saw somebody blowing glass? It really is when I actually blew glass myself, I think. And that's when I wanted to get into it. So, I, uh, I really had not a lot of prior knowledge about it. I just liked, you know, pipes. I was smoking back in high school. You know, I thought they were awesome. Just thought everything, you know, on Instagram was awesome. And then actually one of my brother's friends who, he's like, oh, this guy kid blows glass, ask him, you know. He showed me some stuff, and I just fell in love with it. Who was it? Um, his Instagram is Plant Life, I believe. He's low-key glass blower around here, but real cool guy. Let me get on the torch. Let me do some stuff, and I mean, that's what started my passion, I guess. That's crazy. I also remember we were talking about how you've actually taken a few classes for yeah. glass blowing. Yeah. So I've taken a couple of classes up. Um, it's actually uh, Chihuly's Glass School in Seattle. They just started offering flame working classes. They normally do soft glass in the furnace. And uh, I took a few two-week classes there, which really helped, you know, just every day waking up blowing glass with, you know, masters of glass blowing, just really just taught me something. But those classes just really sharpen up your skills like nothing else. Put you to another level. Exactly, yeah, you know, and you just see these guys work and it's really cool just every glass blower and the you know in the world works so different and that's what I really think is cool, you know, and you can work so different and then both have a beautiful, you know, similar piece at the end. And it's just really cool about the process. Do you have like glass blowers that you look yep. up to? Okay, or? so I definitely look up to, you know, uh, Buck Glass, is, you know, one of my favorites. I, I try to make my skeletons without coming near his style at all because you know he just I loved him before I even, you know, started blowing glass and I really respect what he does. Scott Deppy, I'm at Askewki. He was one of the ones I took a class from. He just has, you know, great shaping, and obviously the Italians, Cesare, all these guys. But um, chalk glasses, um, the sculpting, the big balloons. Um, but really, you know, all those guys. I just I appreciate clean work. That's what I want to start to do. And as the young glass floor, it's hard, but clean patterns, clean shaping, clean optics, you know, and then start to throw in these, you know, fun little things, skeletons, big horns, everything, you know, that makes it a silly and whatnot. Talk to me about the piece that we've been working on. We've actually been working on it for like the past three days. Yeah, so like I said, I take a lot of time with my pieces anywhere, you know, from a day, I guess, to, you know, a week, a couple weeks. It might not be every day on a torch, but yeah, this was three days of hard work, probably about 20 hours, maybe I'd say here or there in total of, you know, me working on the torch or cold working the piece. Um, what is it? So it's uh, just a big blue mini tube. Um, the color is Mystique from Glass Alchemy. And then there are um, two sections of chip stacks, one on the neck, one on the body. What's a chip stack? So the chip stack is, um, where I will actually 
stack together a bunch of glass. I do it a lot different than a lot of glass floors, so that's what I'm saying. Everybody does it different. So I'll stack together glass. Imagine if my fingers were a bunch of rods of glass, and then I just melt it down, and then I chop them up so it's little squares, and they have lines, different colored lines going through them. And then just puzzle them together in different patterns with different colors or different way the lines are shaped. So kind of like layered or? Not necessarily layered, but just um, like puzzled together flat. and Pieces? Yep, exactly. Okay. So it's like, think if I had 40 tiny squares and I was going to turn those 40 squares into, you know, a square this big. Okay. And then I'd have a square this big and what I actually do is fold that square into a circle. So then once I have a square like my hand, I fold it into a circle and then you get a tube and then you can work it on from there. It also has one of my gremlins, or I guess dinosaurs. I still haven't fully decided what I'm calling them. You know, maybe I'll let the people decide once I start making a couple more. Sure. But, um, and that's kind of eating the tube mouthpiece. You know, I'm trying to stand out, do kind of my own thing with the skull. There's a lot of people. I could, you know, think of 10 people who are doing big skulls like that. But um, hopefully my little technique of it kind of coming up the mouth is unique. I was going to say, is anybody before. else having the skull, you know, like what you're doing, I eating seen the... Quite, it almost looks like, like it's that. eating the bomb. Right? Yeah, right. exactly. That's why I like to kind of just, like, it's just really eating it. And, you know, I like it's cool. I think when you're actually hitting the piece, it looks like you're staring right at the dinosaur, you know, which is really funny. And um, it's pretty cool. I, I'm excited to show you guys when it's all out of So what's next for you? <laughs> um... That's a good question. Um, probably just you know start working with some other artists, traveling a little bit more. Um, always refining my skills. That's what I love. That's what I want to always do. Do you, you have know? any goals? Um, obviously to support myself in the future. You know, by making if I could if it's really my goal by making just what I want. You know, sure. like I said, the pieces I want to make, not necessarily. I make something and everybody loves it and they want, you know, everybody wants one of them. Because, um, you know, a lot of artists do that and I have so much respect for those guys making all those pieces, you know, it's a grind. But for me, I just want to kind of make the individual piece to me that I wanted to smoke out of, you know, and then I hope I could share that with someone and it would be a unique part of their life as well. Personalized. Exactly. Personalized. Very personalized. You know, like I said, sometimes, you know, these pieces I'll have in my head, you know, in my heart for a week, a month. You know, and I'm slowly working on it, always thinking. Things change up all the time on the fly. I always start, I think a piece is going to end up some way. It's always totally different. So what he's saying is Larry Limes puts love into all of his glass. Hand-blown glass with love. That is actually what I used to say all the time when I started. And I stopped saying it, but I think I'm going to start again. There you go. That should be your logo right there. With love. Put it underneath your bio on there Instagram. I might, I might do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, it's just important. When I was buying pieces, I was just so, it was cool. I'd meet some of the artists and I was like, I loved it. You know, it was, it was art for me, real, you know, real art. And it made me happy if I was having bad days, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a bonus. I'm smoking pot out of it, but you know, I, I love the piece itself. I take it with me hiking, you know, and just, you know, I love looking at it, you know, over the mountain. And that's kind of what got me into this love of glass. And as silly as it is, you know, being in the pipes, but I think I'll be, you know, around all types of glass, not just pipes, for the rest of my life. Um, well, speaking on that, glass is kind of a hard thing to work with. What have been some of the challenges that you've had blowing glass? Um, it definitely can be a little tough sometimes. Your things will break, they won't go how you want. You know, someone like me, you know, or these other artists who spend 30, 40 hours on a piece, that can be really, really tough when you're just on the tail end and something goes horribly wrong. And you can just lose it all, right? Oh, lose it all, you know. Like even with this away. one, you had a crack in the piece, but yep. those are easily cleaned out. Or yeah, fixed. so sometimes, you know, crack would be a horrible thing on my skulls. They're not the worst thing. You know, they're open from the inside and the bottom. So if it cracks, I can go from both sides, really fix that crack. So as long as I'm not, as long as the hollow vessel doesn't crack, right. it's that's what's worrying because then you'll see a big scar. But on the skull, you won't even be able to notice. And just to kind of clarify, cracks are kind of normal in glass blowing. Yeah, like, all yeah. of the artists that I filmed this before, they have had stuff that's had cracks in the glass. Exactly. You just yeah. clean it up, and as long as it looks perfect and nice, yep. You know. That's yep. So just, that's just part of the job. Like I said, it's um. You know, and sometimes just they won't work out. You might have to fix them. Have you burned or cut yourself? Before? Oh yeah, I got you know two really bad burns on my arm there. You know, my thumbs cut, my hands cut now. Um, I'm maybe a little sloppier than I should be when it comes to being on the torch, but um, 
yeah, it's just you know part of the job if I'm gonna be doing this what is 30, 40 hours a week. The worst you've had. Uh, worst I had was actually when I was at that glass school in Seattle. The Chihuly? Yeah, the Chihuly school for Matuskuki's course. And I just, what was I doing? I was trying to inside out, get something inside out and just brushed my finger right through my Herbie's needle flame. And oh my gosh, you know. And Did it turn into a hot dog? Yeah, <laughs> I swear you could almost see the bone there. I was just, it was, but it healed up great, you know. I was a little worried, but it healed up almost just about perfect. That's normal, you know, that's where uh, I heal so fast from burns now as I've been blowing glass, you know, and I almost don't even mind the pain anymore. Is glass blowing more of a hobby for you right now, or? Yeah, it's a hobby that I'm lucky enough to make, you know, a little bit of money basically to pay for all my supplies and stuff, so I'm not necessarily digging myself into a big hole. Um, I was able to have a little money saved up, so like I said, I'm just kind of, I'm not making money, I'm not losing money, just staying even, kind of doing my thing. Um, like I said, I'm not in a rush to put a lot of my work out there until I'm very comfortable with it, until I know that this is the best work I can put out there, you know. Quality. Quality work. I don't want, you know, and I'll, I'm okay being patient if that's what it takes, but I think I'm just about getting very comfortable in my work, and it's a vulnerable thing, glass blowing, you know, all these people sitting around a table high staring at something you made, you know, maybe judging it to all hell, who knows, you know, yeah. so. I mean, it's, honestly, I reached out to you because I feel that you are one of the underdogs. I've seen a lot of your work on Instagram and even met you in person before and was really impressed with what you came up with. No, I do appreciate that. I really, really do. So it's just, you know, it's all hard work here. And like I said, you don't need a big fancy setup or anything. You know, you just got to work hard. Um, you know, find your inspiration where you find it. Um, know where you mess up. I, I'm big on reflecting. I think you learn just as much off the torch maybe as on the torch, you know, or think about why things are happening, why this is happening, learn about the material itself. You know, that's really what helped me advance a little faster, I think, is just picking it apart, you know. Right on. Cool, man. Well, it's been nice talking to you today. Where can we see more of your work at and where can people reach you at? Um, right now, just Instagram, really. I got a few, you know, head shops around that have my work. I'm going to start really, I think, trying to get out there more. I'll have a website coming hopefully in the next, you know, handful of months. And um, But Instagram, I'm going to try to start using more. I don't use it a ton. Like I said, I keep my head down. I'm working. I'll show off some things that I'm proud of, you know, but... That's going to change. You'll start seeing me around. So. Hopefully we start seeing you a lot more around. I do appreciate it. I'll, I'll see you blow up. Uh, I'll try. Alright Larry, it was nice talking to you. Yeah, my man, I had a great time, you know. Um, I'm happy that you got to come and see how it's done. And I really appreciate you coming out. Nice. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode at the Daily Sesh. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video because it keeps us motivated to do more. And Leave a message in the comment. What would you like to see in the future? What kind of glass blowers or even questions to ask? You know, we're here for the people. So thanks again and see you guys later at the thanks Daily guys. Sesh.